hello there. Welcome to Time for Reflection. A pause in the day when we ask you to settle back and look through our window on the world, out over the magnificent skyline of New York, and then finally down to our favorite corner, the corner of Madison Avenue and 53rd Street, New York City. Perhaps it reminds you of your favorite corner in Chicago, or Pittsburgh, or Washington, or just Main Street, USA. But no matter what your location, let's pause here to reflect. Yes, let's pause to reflect what we've seen around us in the past year, and perhaps remember to be a little kinder to those we meet during this Christmas season. Now our reflection, the man who sneered at Santa Claus. So you're the man who drove the fairies out of their dells. The gnomes hide as you enter the woods. The squirrels won't talk to you. You don't understand what the wind says at night. And you can't even see the face of the man in the moon. You weren't content to have the butterflies flutter past in the sunlight. You caught them to feel the spangles on their wings. And the moment you touched the gauze, all the purple and the gold rubbed off and they died in your hands. You set a snare for the rainbow, and after you'd trapped it in your prison, it stopped being a rainbow and just turned into a haze of colored lights. Oh, the fortunes and fortunes you've lost. All your dreams, all your faith. And now you're alone and miles and miles away from home. You set forth in the wrong direction through the gate of years, down the path of tears. Why, there's gray in your hair. How can you know about Santa Claus? You went hunting for him just as you searched for the pixies and the elves. And of course you couldn't find him because doubt blurred your eyes. Uh, your name is on his blacklist. He never stops at your chimney. At which you probably shrug your shoulders and sniff and sneer and want us to think that he doesn't exist. But way down in your heart, in a little lonesome corner which belonged to a forlorn boy who got lost inside of you, you know that Christmas is real, that there is a Santa Claus, and that he rides all over the world in a single night in a wonderful sleigh that simply can't be emptied, no matter how many guns, and drums, and horses, and dolls, and blocks, and books he takes from it. You've heard the bells on his reindeer when they champed on the gables as he wheezed and puffed and squeezed down the tight old chimney place. You never could understand how he managed to get through it because, well, it wasn't really a chimney, but just a hole no bigger than the stovepipe. But the chimney didn't pinch at all. You believed that he would come, and faith widened the way for him. And he always brought the very things for which you wrote, too. Mother helped with the letter. You and she composed it. She guided your hands, and even suggested what to ask for. But you sealed the envelope all by yourself, and Mother took it off with her the next morning because, well, she knew the exact letterbox from which he received his mail. Oh, where are your sneers now? Yes, you know you'd give half the world to go back tonight and crawl upstairs to the bedroom under the eaves and wish things again. And half the world to sleep at home one more Christmas Eve. Uh, no boy ever truly slept on Christmas Eve, but you pretended to with all your might and main. And when mother and father tiptoed into the room and stood beside the cot, you peeped through one half-open lid and wondered why he kissed her. And once a moonbeam slipped in and fell on her face, and you saw tears on her lashes. And as it grew later and the wind growled and howled, and the branches of the old locust slapped against the window, you moved over and pinched brother to keep him awake, just as you had promised. 
Oh, it seemed like a whole year of nights before you heard the sleigh bells. My, you lay still and squeezed your eyes shut and gave a snorty snore for fear that Santa Claus might come upstairs and catch you waiting. And you didn't move until you heard Father lock his door. Then you crept downstairs. The parlor was dark, but the stove was red hot, and its glow showed the ghostly row of stockings on the mantel. The big lump at the bottom of yours was an apple. You knew that without touching it. He always stuck an apple in the toe. And the thing sticking out was a jumping jack. Yes, he put that in the top for good measure without your even asking for it. Well, he must have had plenty of jumping jacks to be so liberal with them. And over in the corner stood the tree. He never did figure out how he got it down the chimney without smudging the angel with soot. The angel stood at the very top, and she had silver wings that glistened like snow. And all over the branches were golden whirlamid jigs and glass balls and red striped peppermint canes and cornucopias with pictures pasted on them and festoons of popcorn and chains of red and blue and green and yellow and white paper. The toys were spread around on the floor. Your gun with the bayonet was resting against a real skin horse. And on the other side was a soldier set mounted on a big red card with gold edges. Sister's doll, which could open and shut its eyes just as she'd asked, was resting as comfortably as you please in a blue rocking chair that was meant to be used. And the baby shoe fly had a rattle and a closed box on the tray that hung between the heads of the dappled grays. Now, you had no business to touch that box, and it served you right that you got a scare when an impudent red-nosed Jack with carrot-colored whiskers popped up and shook his cap in your face. Well, besides all these gorgeous gifts from Santa Claus were the two handkerchiefs for Mother and the carpet slips, slippers for Father and the Sanford and Merton that Aunt Teresa sent you and the drum from Uncle George. Oh, they don't make drums like that nowadays. The new ones haven't anything like the real sound. Well, you couldn't wait until you'd slipped the tape around your neck and pulled the sticks from the sides and, and then... Rub-a-dub-dub. Rub-a-dub-dub. Why, it isn't the drum at all. It's the steam radiator sounding taps. Calling you to come back. Back over the road of years back to now. But you're lonely and wistful. You want to stay and hear the sleigh bells ring. You want one more real Christmas. Well, the things you buy in the shop are all wrong. You can't get any fun out of them. Oh, Christmas gifts don't count if they, if they aren't brought down the chimney. As we look out our favorite window now upon our favorite corner, we see the many passers-by. Passers-by is all they are because we do not know their names. We do not know their destination. Well, this is Fred Scott saying it's about time to close our window, looking out on the corner of Madison Avenue and 53rd Street, and get ready for our regularly scheduled television programs. And now to each and every one of you, the warmest season greetings from the Dumont Television Network.